Hello everyone, I'm back with another video. I'm Molly. Uh, I, If you don't know who I am, uh, I do books, everything books. A mixture of Christian and mainstream and non-fiction as well as fiction, although it's mostly fiction because that's what I prefer. So, Today, I thought I would do a, 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 a tiny, tiny haul. It's not tiny. Um, it's a haul that has been accumulated over a few months, three to four months-ish. Uh, there'll be a mixture of books from charity shops and from your typical bookstores. Uh, I am going to start with the ones, I'm going to start with the ones that were not bought for birthday related reasons. If you don't know, my birthday overall was at the end of October. So I have some books that were given to me by my uncle. I gave him a list of what I wanted and he bought them for me. Um, and there were also books that I bought myself with birthday money as a birthday present from me, but also technically from the person who gave me the money, which was my grandma. Please ignore my face. Uh, it's healing. It's a spot. But we will ignore that. Uh, and let's just get straight on with the video. I'll be as quick as I can because most of these I've not read. Um... One of the books, and I'll mention it, is not for me. It's one I bought as a Christmas present for my grandma, actually. Um, she doesn't watch my videos. She doesn't She doesn't really do the, the internet much, really. Uh, emails is about it. <laughs> so she won't be seeing this, so there's no... And she already knows that I, I, I'm going to buy it, which obviously I already have, because she asked for it for Christmas. So, yes... Let's get started because we've got a lot to go through. If you haven't already, I would recommend getting a drink and a snack if you want a snack because this is, will probably be a long video. <laughs> yeah, let's get started. So the first book I am going to talk about is, well, it's two books really. I bought them together, uh, although I think they arrived separately. But it's the fourth and fifth books from the Murder Most Unladylike series. Uh, this is the one I've just read. This was this month's, a part of this month's TBR uh, for November. So I have read this. Um, I will do a review. This is just a haul at the moment. So I'm just going to tell you them. And the next one is Mistletoe and Murder, uh, which is the fifth book fifth book and yeah i'm planning to read this during the christmas season so that's those two books it will be a mixture of different age groups although actually i think it's mostly going to be like young adult and adult i think i'm not 100 percent sure the next book i bought has been highly anticipated this is a new release and that is Brave, and this is book one in the King David's Wives, is it? Brides, book one in King David's Brides. This is a biblical fiction by Mishu Andrews. And I've been waiting for this. I pre-ordered it, and I'm really excited. I wanted to read this in October because this would have fulfilled prompts in Katie's from Paperbacks and Ponytails' his readathon for October for the Journey Through the Bible. And it was also the buddy read if people wanted to join in, but I wasn't able to get it in time. So I will be reading this at some point. But I bought this. And because I bought it from Waterstones online, they have an offer way if you spend a certain amount, you get free delivery or something. So whilst I was there online, I looked for a book that was coming out on the same day as Brave and i found this it sounded interesting this is called if you can read it the great library of tomorrow and this is by rosalia agrila solis solis sorry i don't know how to pronounce her name but this is a new release uh, apparently it's book one in a trilogy so it'll be interesting to see what it's like 
this is mainstream as far as I know, so I don't know about content or anything like that, but I like to cover and it sounds good because it's about a library or at least the title sounds like it's about a library so yes this next one is the one i just mentioned um that i bought for my grandma uh, and this is called just different um a memoir by wayne sleep and this is about a ballet dancer of the name wayne sleep it's a memoir as it says uh, he paved the way for male ballet dancers who were shorter than the average of what people were looking for in ballet dancers. Uh, Grandma really likes him. I think he was... Either he is the original Billy Elliot or he is the, the first one who danced slash acted as Billy Elliot in, I assume, the stage play ballet of Billy Elliot. I'm not sure which it is, but either way, uh, Grandma wanted to read it. It's a new release. Uh, it only released at the end of October. So yeah, and that's a picture of him, I think, reasonably recently. I don't know what it's like, but Grandma thought it sounded interesting. So yeah. The next book that I bought, um, these are all from different places. So all the ones I just told you about were online, a mixture of Amazon and Waterstones so far. This I bought in person at a small bookstore in Livam St. Anne's, which is kind of on, sort of on the coast. It's on the way to Blackpool here in the UK, uh, but it's uh, quite, quite a bit before then. Um, I've been loads of times over the years, only once, maybe twice in a year normally, because it's the sort of place you want to go to when the weather's quite nice, which if you know anything about the UK or you live here, you know that's not always easy. <laughs> So yeah, um, this is one of the books I picked up. This is Nero by Con E. Golden. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, this is on my current TBR for Historiathon because obviously it's about Nero. I don't know how much Nero is involved in the book, but uh, yeah, I'm using it for the non-fiction hybrid prompt as well as one, maybe two other ones, I can't remember. Uh, so yeah, it sounded interesting. I saw this in Tesco originally, but I just took a picture of it because I was like, I can't really get it yet because it was quite expensive. It, this was £22 because obviously it's a newest release. It came out this year and obviously it's a hardback, so that they always cost more. <laughs> so yeah. The next book I also bought on Amazon. Uh, and I say book, it's books. It's a trilogy and this is the Mark of the Lion trilogy by Francine Rivers. There's the first and third book. I've currently got the second one on my TBR, which I have a pile of books for this month that I want to read or the Historiathon uh, Readathon that I am joining in with. So, yes. Uh... Let's go with these next ones. So these, apart from one, these are all bought from the same bookshop I bought Nero. So because of that, I'm going to start with the one that isn't. And then we will get back to that. So the one book that I bought from a charity shop is a non-fiction called Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. Um, I've been going through a couple of her books and I watch her YouTube videos on YouTube. They're all like conferences ones and podcasts and there's also a proper video as well as audio actual podcast uh, that Ginger Star Starchy um, and Erin Cooley do and sometimes Joyce Meyer's on it and sometimes they have guests on it as well. But this book is Joyce Meyer's Battlefield of the Mind. I picked it up at a charity shop for, yeah, I think it was £2, wasn't it? Yeah, so I got that for £2. And that was just a, something I picked up at a charity shop because it would be more expensive if I bought it full price. And I wasn't, I was actually on a book ban, which obviously was a very light one. It was more that I was watching what I was buying, spending because of money <laughs> uh, but I saw this and saw it for £2 and I was like it's worth that 
um, I I think her book's really worth paying full price because obviously they all go to a good cause causes. But yeah, I couldn't pass this up because normally full price this is eleven pounds. Okay, I think it's gone. Yeah, I can't remember where I'm up to. Someone came upstairs. I've got someone over. Um, so yeah, two quid. Couldn't pass it up the opportunity. So the next books are the rest of the ones I bought at the independent bookstore in Livam. Uh, she even gave me very kindly a free tote bag. Uh, it's hard to see it, but there we go. Uh, there we go. There you go. And it says if you can't read it because I, I can't in the camera. It says I'd rather be reading, and it says Marion Keys on the bottom. Um, this is a book promoting one of her books, I assume. I've never read her books, but it was doing, it was one of the ones she had available, and I, I don't mind. It's a nice colour, I like the shade of blue and the pink. But, so, yeah. Maybe I'll have to try one of her books to justify having this bag. <laughs> Not that I need to justify having the bag, but, you know. Yeah. So. The second book that I picked up at that bookstore is The Book of Doors. Sorry, it's because I'm reading it and it's backwards when I'm filming. Uh, yeah, The Book of Doors by Gareth Brown. I've heard all, I've heard things about this and I think it sounds good. It's right up my street, sort of other... Not, maybe not other worlds, but you know that sort of thing i don't know anyway it sounded interesting i thought i'd pick it up so that is that one the next book i picked up is the the rise sorry rise of the school for good and evil this is by soman Tainani. i love the main series which is the school for good and evil fantastic kids uh series um, the main series is about the descendants of your classic fairy tale characters. Uh, but obviously there are some twists to it, which is really interesting. Um, definitely recommend it. Um, and this is kind of like a prequel. So this is about the uh, these two brothers, I think the twins. I'm not sure. They might be twins or at least, you know, either way they're brothers. And I, as the title goes, it's the rise and I assume the about the creation of the school so this will be interesting to read and then the next the next book and last book i got because i got four because I, I i can never seem to just buy one usually in normal bookstores charity shops yes but bookstores it's just too many good books or at least what look like good books so the next one is tress of the emerald sea by brandon sanderson i have heard Basically, that is like The Princess Bride, and I was sold. Um, I've never read Brandon Sanderson, but I know that a lot of his books are big, and I think probably what people call high fantasy. I don't know if that's right. But either way, his books are often very big and are full of worlds, like the probably a series. This isn't, as far as I know, this is a standalone. I think it is, yeah, it's a part of a universe that he's written, uh, the Cosmere universe, but I don't think you have to have read the original books to read this. So yeah, so that's good. I picked that up because Princess Bride, I love Princess Bride. So that is all the books that I have bought outside of my birthday. So now that we've done that, it's time to get on to the most exciting bit, in my opinion. And that is my birthday books. So I'm going to start with the ones that I've got for my birthday from my uncle. And then we will go into the larger haul of birthday books, which are the ones I bought for myself. Uh, with my grandma's money and also my own money. I mean, all of it's my own money, but like, you yeah, know, the money from my grandma was a gift. So, yeah. Okay. So out of the books that my uncle got me, most of them are Christian fiction, one of them isn't. So I'm going to start with the one that isn't, because then we can get into the really exciting ones for the ones my uncle got me, or at least personally exciting to me. So the first 
book is a box set of three books. It's a series that is actually has more books, but because I just wanted to get more, I just only wanted to get three, just in case I don't like the series. So uh, this is a novella series called the Wayward Children series. This one's probably the better side. This has the first three books. The first one is Every Heart Doorway. Second is Down Among the Sticks and Bones. And then the third is Beneath the Suburb Sky. And these are all by Sean and Maguire. Now, I think these are all mostly standalones, but part of the same universe. But some of them in the whole series as a whole are connected to the same characters in previous books. I don't know which books they are. But I know from Alexandra Rosalind, who is a, a mainstream booktuber here on YouTube, she has raved about this series and pretty much from the beginning. Like these are from like really old videos because uh, I went through her backlist and I'm still going through them. So yes, from her reviews, I bought these because these are based on the children as I think as adults, I think, or certainly after they come back from different world so for example like Alice in Wonderland when she comes back to the real world you know how they deal with being back in the normal non-magical non-fantastical world so yeah that was a really interesting premise I thought that was right up my street that sort of thing I don't know if Alice in Wonderland is a story version in here I don't know or in the series but I'm interested. Now it's time to get to the Christian ones. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the ones that aren't part of a series. So what the first one I'm talk showing is The Broken Branch. This is by Erin Magnum. This is uh, about grief uh, because the main character, and this is on the blurb, her dad dies in a car accident. And I recently, unexpectedly, although not because of an accident, lost my dad. Uh, he died at the end of January, uh, July, sorry. Uh, so yeah, this is about grief, and I thought this might be a good one to give me a good cry. Not that I didn't have good cries at the time, but yeah. This is going to be cheerful reading. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought this might be quite cathartic to read. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be a fun read. Uh, we'll see. The next book is The Thief of Corinth by Tessa Afshar. Uh, this is biblical fiction. And yeah, I'm not quite sure what this is about. I haven't read Tess Afshar's book, so I thought I would. Most of these books I've not really read, Author, they're authors I've not particularly read. So, yeah, I'm excited to try them out. I haven't grown up Christian fiction, which is why most of these I'm going to not really talk much about, but yeah. Okay, so the next one is book one in a trilogy so far, but it might be more. There might be more books, I don't know. Uh, but uh, book one is The Mistletoe Countess by Peppa Basham. This is a, who are they? Oh yeah, a Frederick and Grace uh, mystery series. Yeah, mystery. Um, so this is the first one. I'm hoping to read this during the, the Christmas season, hopefully next month specifically, because it's set at Christmas due to the title, I'm assuming. And the reason why I wanted this series is mainly because of the second book the cairo curse by pepper basham this is book two and if you can't tell it's egyptology based and it says at the top on the back here it says clue meets indiana jones with a fiction loving twist only grace percy can provide and i assume grace percy is a character i don't know i assume it's the grace person and that is what sold me. Like, I'm sorry, Indiana Jones? I don't need to know anything more about it. I'll buy it. But then I can't really buy it on, on its own because it's part of a series. I like to kind of read the series if I can. So that's what this is. And that's all of the ones I've got from my uncle. Now we're down to the ones where I just had 
several different book sprees basically I say several there's technically only two but yeah with the amount of books that I bought you would think it's several all of the ones that I'm showing you now are Christian fiction the ones that are in this bag that you can see the corner of here are from Waterstones so none of these are actually Christian uh, so that I'm leaving those for last apparently uh, but yeah because really these ones are the most exciting ones because these are the ones that I've heard a lot about either the author or the book in particular so yes so all of you people who talk about a certain author who does a certain time series I bought book one and then I bought book two yeah so this is book one and two of the timeless series by gabriel meyer first one is when the day comes and the second one is in this moment so many people on christian booktube have been talking about this series so many that i'm like this has to i have to give this a try it's certainly the sort of thing that's up my street the sort of like time different timeline type things uh, because these are to do with a character having at least two timelines to choose from to live in and she has up until a certain age to try each one and then choose one to stay in and I think what happens is she goes to sleep and wakes up in the other timeline after spending the day in that other timeline <laughs> so in the first one this is about someone called Libby and she's in 1774 Colonial Williamsburg and in 1914 Gilded Age New York City and that's book one book two is and I think they're descendants of the same one either like daughters or granddaughters or whichever of the same family I think or at least that's the sort of thing that I've heard um, so the second one is about a woman called Maggie and she's living in separate lives in three timelines in this one so she's in 1861 at the outbreak of civil war i assume in america um 1941 which is obviously world war ii and then 2001 which i think is i don't know if it talks about the twin towers being destroyed in 2001 i know it's just the right year for it so it might be tackling that as well i'm not sure um but yeah so that's the first two i didn't buy the third one yet i don't want to buy them all i was tempted but i didn't because i if i don't like it i don't want to have the whole series that i've spent money on so i bought the first two because they were to arrive on the same day yeah so and i didn't want to have just, just one book arriving on different days so <laughs> It's a good excuse <laughs> so the next one i'm gonna do is the first book in the matchmaker series by jen Tirano. this is called a match in the making i've heard this series is quite funny and this is also peri a period romance i guess is probably kind of historical i can't remember anyway but yeah so this is book one i didn't buy any of the others because again I don't want to buy the whole series and then realise I don't like it. So, yeah, I just bought book one. And also it saves money. I'm not going to lie. I spent, I just spent a cheaper amount than I thought. I think it was about 50 odd quid on all of these Christian books. And that's from like six books. On Am and all of them were Amazon. So I think, I think that's quite cheap. I don't know. But anyway. So... The next three books are all by the same author, which is why I did Jen Toronto first. Um, I don't think they're part of a series, I think they're all standalones. So the first book is The Lost Boys of, is it of? Yeah, of Barlow Theatre by Jamie Jo Wright. I think these are all kind of like creepy, thrillery, suspense yeah, sort of books. No. I don't know, but yeah, so this is based on oh okay so yeah apparently this starts in like 1915 or thereabouts and then a few decades later apparently as well so this will be interesting i like this sort of genre so it'll be interesting to try a christian one the next book is the curse of 
Mr. Wafer, again, same sort type of song there. Uh, this is about, oh, an orphan apparently. And then also, oh, it's a dual timeline, so apparently it's talking about a woman a century later. So that'll be interesting. I don't know what year the first one is, but yeah. And the last Jamie Jo Wright book is The Vanishing at Castle Murrow. Uh, again, this is, yeah, this is dual timeline. I think I've heard all of hers are dual timeline. I think, I don't know. But certainly these last two that I've talked about are. Um, so this is originally in 1870 and then in present day, whatever present day means. So yeah, um, all of these three books are recommendations by Katie at Paperbacks and Ponytails. So thank you, Katie. I have now bought them and I'm excited to get to them at some point. Um, so yeah, those are all the ones that I bought on Amazon. Those are all the ones that I bought with my own, well, it's all my own money. But they were all birthday presents to myself from my own money. These next books are all from Waterstones. And I bought a lot. I bought seven books. How did I buy seven books? It's the most I've ever spent at once in Waterstones. I think it was about 80 odd quid. I mean, to be fair, that's not too bad because two of the books are hardbacks. Maybe I'll start with those. Yeah, I'll start with those because the rest are all paperback. So, I'm scared that that's going to fall. Probably will. So, the first book that I picked up is The Ministry of Time. This is by Kaylee Ann Bradley, or however you pronounce her name. I think it's woman. Um, I've heard, of, again, a bit about this from Alexandra Roslin on YouTube, booktube. Again, this sounded quite up my street. Certainly with the cover and the title, if any of you have watched the Disney Plus series Loki, this really reminds me of that. I don't know if any of the topics or anything like what Loki's about, but yeah. So I picked this up because again, it's the sort of thing that I like. I think I certainly tend to, it's certainly in that arena of things anyway. The... So the second and final hardback that I got is The Spell Shop. This is by Sarah Beth Durst. Um, again, I've heard a lot about this on BookTube, especially mainstream secular BookTube. I know there are some things to watch out for. Um, I know this also has LGBT content. So I don't know what it's about, really. I know it's a cosy fantasy. And I know that it's to do with witches or a witch. So, yeah. I like the cover, though. I mean, I would say that's a cosy fantasy cover if I ever saw one. Wouldn't you? <laughs> so, yeah. That's my last hardback. Now let's go to the paperbacks. So, I might take these two out of them. Not necessarily because they're the same author, although actually... No, they're not. <laughs> um, it's just because, yep. Yeah. Didn't matter either way it fell. At least it didn't fall on the floor though. So, the first book I'm going to show you is um, A Dark Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This is the same author called Victoria Schwab because I've heard she goes by, well, it's the same name but different variations of her name. Um, I've heard this really good. Again, this is about kind of like time travel type stuff, I think, or at least space travel. Apparently, there's like different types of Londons. I'll tell you the blurb, it's only short. Um, so, Kel is one of the last travellers. Magicians with a, a rare ability to travel between parallel universes connected by one magical city. There's Grey London, without magic, and ruled by the Mad King George III. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Uh, Red London, where magic is revered, and where Kel was raised alongside the heir to the Empire. White London, where people fight to control the remaining magic, and magic fights back. And once, there was a black London. And it has dot, dot, dot. <gasps> Shivers. So, yeah, this sounded good. Again, this is one that Alexandra Roslin talked about. And yeah, it sounds really interesting. Again, it's that sort of magical other worlds, 
of the timelines type thing. I always find that stuff really interesting. I think it's because I grew up with Doctor Who and it was like an obsession, you know, so that's probably why. <laughs> so yeah. The next book is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is a thriller, I think. I don't know if it's horror as well. It's certainly thriller anyway. I've heard the book's quite good. I've picked up another book by her, which I'll show you. Um, this one is, yeah, so this one, it's apparently about ghosts, but the main character, Maggie, doesn't believe they exist. Um, so yeah, I don't know, again, because I've not read any of these books and because they're mainstream, I don't know about content. So yeah, we'll see how we go on with that one. Okay, sorry, I'm having to do this all on my bed. Okay, funnily enough, the next one is the second and last Wiley Sager book that I have picked up. And this is the only one left. Um, I know this, I think this is based on a mystery. This is definitely, especially with the picture is given and the title is given me, um, and when there, where, when there was none vibes. Is that the right title? Biographer Christie. Um, I haven't read that book, Biographer Christie one, but I've seen the, I think it was a series, like a short series or something. Uh, it had Charles Dance in it and a few other British actors like Aidan Turner, he was in the Hobbit trilogy, film trilogy, because obviously it's not, the book isn't, and a few other English or British actors that I recognise as well. Um, I don't know if this ended to do with that, I'm on a tangent apparently. But yeah, this sounded interesting. Actually, yeah, both of these books I got from another booktuber, a different one this time, uh, Darling Desi, um, Desiree on booktube. I love her. She was the first booktuber I ever started watching. Uh, she does mainstream booktube stuff. Uh, the next one is um, The City of Ghosts by V.E. Schwab, or is she Victoria Schwab in this one? Ah. Victoria Schwab. The title is quite difficult to read. I got this because originally, I think it was probably the hardback or the American version, it looked very Christmassy because uh, I think there was like white background, like snow. I don't know if it's snowy. Oh uh, yeah, but they do go to Edinburgh, so yeah. And I remember, I know this is a series or trilogy and this is about a little young girl who can see ghosts because she has a near-death experience, I think. I could be wrong about that, I don't know, but I want to see her parents are also ghost hunters, but they can't see ghosts like she can, sort of thing. Um, so it's about that really. Uh, that's why they go to Edinburgh, because I don't think they're Scottish. I, I'm assuming they're probably American, but I don't know. Um, they might not be, they might just be English. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. Yeah, the writing's quite big. I think this is one of Victoria Schwab's that is like children's middle grade so yeah. the last book is the fall of the school of good and evil and again this is a prequel about the two brothers who are the headmasters or one of them is i didn't know there was another one apparently the rise came out in 2022 i didn't know that and then this came out last year i think well anyway oh here we go yeah yeah so this one came out last year um, so I don't know if there's any more about the two brothers, I don't know after this, but yeah. So I picked this up because I was like, well, I can't leave it here at Waterstones, all on its own. There were probably other copies, okay. I was just justifying myself for buying another book. So that's the end of my book haul. Um, yeah. So far so good with how much I have filmed without editing. I am on like 40 odd minutes, which is impressive in my opinion. There might be books I have missed because there are books that I have bought reasonably-ish recently in the summer, but I don't know when, and I'm not sure, I'm, not, I'm just not going to count them. Um, there's also a book that I borrowed, which I showed before, but I'm not counting that because that's a borrow. I'll be giving that back once I've read it. Just so you know. None of this is me going, oh, look at me. Although I am, it's, I'm, I'm, I was excited to show you all of my books. But, yeah, none of it is from, you know, me going, look at me, look at me, aren't I so amazing? No. No. <laughs> 
but uh, yeah, it was mainly because I wanted to show you all I've bought and been given because that's partly why I, I started this channel. So yeah, um, also none of this is for me to go and make you go and buy books. You know, please only do what you're able. You know, I don't want to be the cause of your money problems. I'm the cause of my own ones, you know. <laughs> so yeah, that is it. Uh, I apologise if the lighting has been changing. I've been using natural daylight, and uh, it was a beautiful day. But then as soon as the mid afternoon came, it started getting dull. So yeah, it's now like four half four or something. So yeah, it's quite late now. So if it's a bit dark, I apologise, but we're done now. So I'm not gonna turn lights on. So yes, I pray God bless you and that you have a lovely end to your week. I will be back with another video. Bye.